I'm back for episode two of Mountain Bike to Gravel Bike. In this episode, we're gonna get the frame built up with all these fabulous parts behind me, some new, some old. Now, if you haven't seen episode one, stop right now, go back a week on the tech channel and watch that first, because all of this will make much more sense. There'll also be a link in the description down below to help get you there. Now, it's enough waffle from me, let's get this thing underway. So taking this bike apart was actually pretty easy. Thankfully, the previous owner had looked after it nicely. We had no dramas removing any components and I've boxed up all of the old stuff just in case, well, you never know, it might come in handy in the future. So the first stage to building this bike is simply gonna be taking as many of the parts off of the bench and bolting them straight on. So things like the rear derailleur, the stem, the handlebars, we'll maybe get the calipers bolted on. We just simply want to reduce the number of parts on the bench that can easily be attached on to the bike. Right, let's get to it. Oh, and before we get started, and I don't want anyone saying, oh, look at this idiot clamping the frame with the work stand. Um, it's perfectly safe. It's an aluminium frame. I haven't clamped it too tight and the seat tube is a nice strong section. So don't worry. So the cassette I've gone for is this. It's a Shimano Deal XT from Shimano's mountain bike range. Great thing is, it's all compatible with their GRX group sets. Now, I've gone from an 11 to 42 to cassette. Look at this big boy. Now, the reason I've gone for this wide range cassette is because I'm running a single chainring at the front and it's nice to have that real wide range of gears so I can hopefully make my way out some super steep climbs. Right, let's get this on. Hopefully I can get it all lined up in a one. Oh. Tires next. Now, because I've chosen to go down the 650B wheel set route with this bike because of all sorts of issues with spacing and the fact it had smaller wheels originally, I've gone for a 650B tire, of course. And then I've gone for a 45 millimeter width. Now the advantage in many cases of using that slightly smaller wheel size is that it allows you to run a larger volume tire. Now, hopefully the 45 millimeter wide tire will fit and we'll have clearance for it. Fingers crossed, I've done a bit of rough estimations and guessing and I think we should be all right. Let's get these onto the wheels and then we can move on to offering the wheels into the frame. And that's gonna be another point where I need to hopefully work out a good solution because our wheels are using the through axle system and whereas this bike is a little bit older, it's got a quick release setup. So I've got some axle converters, which I've ordered in the correct width, that fingers crossed will be a direct fit, and then our through axle wheels are gonna fit into the quick release bike. Happy days. Rule number one of speaking bike, line your valves up with your tire logos. Just make life a lot nicer for everybody. So we're at the point of needing to put the wheels into the bike. As you can see, most of the stuff is attached, bolted on, crank has just gone on, and we did have to space the bottom bracket out slightly because the crank arm was catching on the um, chainstay. Now, this is just one of the small sort of complications and issues you come across when upgrading old bikes like this because they're not built to the same standards of some of the modern components. So you do have to overcome some of these issues. Another one of those issues is to do with the rear hub spacing. So the GRX rear hub spacing with the 12mm through axle is a good few millimetres wider than the hub spacing of this nine speed old school mountain bike. So what we're gonna have to do is just open the frame ever so slightly as we put the wheel in. It's only a few mil, it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. But it is something that you need, do need to take into account when you're ever planning on upgrading a bike like this. So, fingers crossed, it all fits. Okay. 
So other than fitting the calipers, routing the brake hoses through the frame, cutting them to the correct length, putting the fittings on the end, then working out how to route the DI2 cables, the junction box and the battery, which incidentally, I need to go and find a battery from the plethora of spares we've got at GCN Mega Base. The bike is starting to take shape and we're starting to run out of parts to fit, although the brakes and the DI2 cables still a fairly involved job. But something that I needed to work out and find a solution for was finding a suitable caliper. Now, road calipers use a flat mount standard and a different spacing to what we've got on this bike. Here we've got an IS mount or a post mount fitting. So I've managed to find Ultegra calipers that have got the right fitting on them. And the great thing is, there's a really helpful online chart on the Shimano website which I'll put a link in the description down below to, which gives you all of the different compatibility of all of the different components from different series and different group sets. Therefore, that chart was able to tell me that this caliper from the Ultegra group set will work perfectly fine with my GRX shifters. So that is actually a really good way of finding a solution to a problem that you face when you're building a little bike and a project like this. So head over and check that out and it's actually Really useful tool and has got me out of trouble here. So I'm going to mount, mount these calipers on and um, well, we'll crack on, shall we? So little update as to where we're at, because a lot has just gone on over this build. Right, and although it looks like it might be a complete mess with all of the hoses and DI2 cables everywhere, we've made really good progress. So the battery for the DI2 is inside the seat post. I've used the bottle cage boss on the seat tube that I've then drilled out slightly to allow me to fit the DI2 cable through. Then we've got a junction box, I'm going to route most of the DI2 cable in externally and just make it neat and tidy using some zip ties. So that runs through to the rear derailleur. We run all the way along the top, the top tube. Then we've got a y, y splitter, Y cable here to go to the shifters. And then we're going to run a junction box in the bar end. The hoses for the brakes are all connected. I'm going to need to bleed those. That'll probably be the last job. But so far, it's actually looking like a bike. And we got working gears. God, who'd have thought? Right, let's crack on, tidy all this stuff up, find some zip ties, get it all looking, spick and span, and hopefully be ready to finish this thing off. Here we go, bike complete. We've got wheels, gears, brakes, tires, handlebars, you name it, we've got it. Basically, it's a complete bike. I think it looks absolutely incredible, but I'm keen to hear your thoughts on this bike. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of it. And I cannot wait to go shredding on this bike, but for that, you're gonna have to wait for next week. So that is episode two done and dusted. I'm also gonna upload the picture of this bike over into the bike vault. So head over to the GCN app, Give this bike a super nice and let me know what you think of it. And to make sure you don't miss out on episode three of the build, you know what to do. Like this video and subscribe to GCN Tech. Hit that bell icon and I'll see you next week.